Hey guys, here in 10.2, well really it's an extension of what we finished with 10.1. You know, we were doing uh, correlation coefficients and trying to figure out whether or not a good relationship existed between the two values, an x and a y. Um, well, once we determine that there is a linear relationship, if we know that a linear relationship exists because the r value is really high, um, then what? And so what we have to understand is that there's a regression process that the calculator can do for us, okay? That's going to build an equation, a mathematical relationship between them um, that helps give us uh, our x and y factors. Uh, our calculator can do several different regressions. We are going to focus specifically on linear regression. And the way that we're going to do that um, is always by doing this following process, uh, collecting data, which is typically already done in the textbook questions and in the test questions, but that's what we would go out and do. First, we've got to collect some data. Constructing a scatter plot to see if a pattern exists. If it looks really random, we're probably not even going to go forward from there. Uh, we just say, you know what, there's not a relationship there. But once we start to get a sense that there is a pattern, we would compute the sample, statistic, sample correlation value R and compare that to the critical value. If and when there is a significant relationship, okay, if one exists, uh, then we're going to determine the relationship. Now, in, in algebra, in algebra 2, in geometry, we always graph lines y equals mx plus b. And I, I don't honestly have a good answer for you. <laughs> it's, it's just a weird, I think it has to do with the idea of starting value and then adjusting from there. Uh, but when we build the, uh, um, the regression lines in this class, we're actually going to use the format y equals a plus bx. B being our slope, A being our y-intercept. Um, again, these aren't actual values, they're approximations of the data. And so let's, let's, uh, let's take a look at this process in whole, okay? So first thing we do is we're gonna calculate the R value. Let's get our, our some data in here. So I'm gonna go stat, I'm gonna edit. This is from last, um, last uh, sections. So I'm gonna get rid of those data and that data and I'm just going to do something that I know will be pretty linear. One, two, three, four. Okay. Over here, if I did two, four, six, eight, it'd be perfectly linear. So I'm going to go 2.1, uh, 3.8, um, 6, and 7.95. Okay, so that's a fairly linear relationship. So let's go ahead and run our regression. Now, what we've been doing is we've been running the linreg ax plus b. If we actually just go down a little bit further, option 8 has the a plus bx. So that our answers in the format that we're expected to use. Um, we have l1, l2. Really what we're doing is we're calculating, looking for that r value. Look at that r value, 0 0.9988. This is going to be a really high r value, so I know that it's going to work. There is a significant relationship, so I go forward. We're going to write the equation and then make predictions based on that value based on that equation. If that R value is really low, again, we compare that to the I value, I table values. Um, let's see if I can find that again. I don't remember where I put it. Let's come back in here. Here we go. If we look in here, remember we're looking at these I values, uh, 0.999, I mean, with four data values, I even at 0.01, I'm, I'm definitely up here above the 0.917. Um, so that allows me to, to say that it's safe to run a regression. Now we've been doing that, and right here in front of me is the equation. A is 0.025, B is 1.975. No, notice the slope is really close to 2, and the A is really close to 0. So it's starting, you know, 2, 4, 6, 8 kind of deal. There is a way to help with this process, okay? We did use A and B. However, I, and I can hand write this down. My equation is A equals 0.025. That's really close. Okay, so if I were to do this, my equation would be y equals 0.025 plus, was it 1975? 1975x. So there's my equation. But what makes this challenging is now I, I can use those values, but what if I want to make predictions about um, the data from there? If I want to make predictions, one really cool thing that our calculators can let us do, you might take a couple of notes or write down what you need to here. When I go and run that regression, 
a habit you can build, obviously it's just option eight, you can press the number eight. X is L1, Y is L2, frequency list I don't touch, but where it says store regression equation, I can actually store this in my Y equals. Sometimes they're really weird decimals and I, and I wanna make predictions but I don't wanna have to carry all the digits. So I can actually store it in my Y equals. And the way that we do that, this button right here, right next to the clear button says VARS, stands for variables. So I'm gonna choose that. Now I want a Y variable, so I'm gonna slide over and say I want a Y variable. I do want it to be a function, so I'll press enter. And let's just go ahead and store it in Y1. I can store it in any of the equations I want. But it's gonna store it where Y1 is written. I run my calculation, nothing has changed here. But when I go to my Y equals, in Y1 is my equation. And if I come up here to plot one, if you've ever wondered why are these up here, if you just press enter on it, it's going to plot the X's and Y's that are in L1 and L2 on the graph. So now when I go to do the graph, I'm going to have to recenter my zoom. I can see my dots and I can see the line going through them and say, okay, that looks like a pretty good fit. So this will do a scatter plot. You might have to change your window. Like my lowest x value wasn't negative. My highest x value was only like uh, five, but my lowest y was probably like the zero to 10 is probably appropriate there. And then if I graph, there's my scatter plot with my line going through it. And one of the things that's really neat and useful is when I go to the table, now I can make all kinds of predictions, right? So look at those numbers. If, if I put seven in, I'm expecting 1385. These are predictive values so I don't have to plug X's in over and over again. Now, if you don't do it this way, if you just write the equation down like I did on the page and just plug numbers in for X, that's fine too. Um, oftentimes your regression equation is used to make predictions of the future. It's called extrapolation, or extrapolating the data. This is done by using the X value, picking an X value and plugging it in and finding a predicted Y value. Notice these equations don't say Y, they actually do say Y prime. Okay, we're, we're identifying this is not really the equation. Um, as a side note, if you're in calculus, that y prime means something different. Here in statistics, this is just our way of saying it is a regressed equation. It is not, um, it is not necessarily the correct equation. And so we use that y prime to predict our value. I guess it would be y equals there, but when we do a substituted value, it comes out as y prime. Okay, at any rate, um, if we just plug in 20, we get a number, and then we can make a prediction for the future. Now, that's pretty straightforward stuff that you guys have dealt with before. All right, good luck, guys. We'll see you in class.